So welcome back to my channel. This is Gamer Dom and a time for another Rambles of a Fool. So um, what's coming up in this edition? Well, we've got a, a insight into Victor Crisley, the CEO of World of Tanks, or Wargaming more accurately, and his thoughts on his game as it comes up to its eighth anniversary. Uh, we've got another Q&A, developers Q&A. We love those things, don't we? look at um, some link-ups with um, a rather unexpected other company and some other stuff besides. So let's hop on over and let's get going. Whoop whoop, new Q&A. So uh, we've had Czech ones, we've had Polish ones, we've had Russian ones. Now we've got a Japanese Q&A. <laughs> so this is Armored Patrol reporting on... Um, yeah, developers Q and A with Russian uh, with um, Japanese uh, developers, I guess. Um, so obviously, it's going to be more focused around that because it always is uh, the nation that's being uh, Q and A'd is interested in their particular one. So clearly, there's an issue with the uh, Japanese crew voices, uh, and they're being re-recorded. So I, I'm not Japanese. I don't know Japanese, so I don't know whether that's true or not. But um, that's what's happening. Um, interesting the release of the new background music. So all that stirring stuff we get, which I quite like actually. I didn't think I would, but as you're logging into a map and into a game, there's that stirring music, which generally sort of is set to the region or the country where that map is supposed to be set. So whether it's Russian, uh, Oriental, blah blah blah, it, it has that stirring music. So apparently that's going to be available for on iTunes if you want to download it. Um, so, question around mods. Um, so this is a sore point, and and I have to say I don't think Wargaming have uh, covered themselves in any kind of sense of glory with the whole modding situation. So everyone, people, players will be aware, and maybe newer players won't be aware, but there are mods that you can download to install on your game, which gives you enhanced something. Now, there is a whole raft of these things, from very, very innocuous ones that just help you playing, you know, just you get familiar with, you know, like being able to see the kind of win rate and the ability of different players on your team and the enemy team, um, right down to the really um, naughty mods that are illegal that, in that give you an unfair advantage. A whole range of these mods. And it's one of the big issues um, in World of Tanks is about what are legal and what are not legal. And some time ago they introduced this idea of uh, approved mods and unapproved mods. And if you play with unapproved mods and uh, you get caught, uh, you can be initially banned for a week. And then if you persist and get another strike, you are your account is suspended permanently. You lose it. And uh, anything that's on it, all the premiums you've got, all the money you've spent goes down the pan which those of us who do not intentionally cheat um, will be entirely pleased with however there are some real issues around mods in this game and not just the people who deliberately go about trying to um, download mods and and you hear all kinds of rumors about various clans and and different people who run certain mods um, which give them an unfair advantage. And that's the definition between what mods are allowed and what mods, mods are not allowed. Does it give the player an unfair advantage? That's the And, and that's a really grey area. Now clearly, if you have a mod that allows you to see where an enemy tank is on the minimap that should be hidden, that's an unfair advantage. If you have a, a, a gun system that allows you to um, uh, some button that allows you automatically to hit um, an enemy tank that's an unfair advantage however there's some grey areas right so is it as bad to have a system that allows you to clean up the view range of your tank so you know as you get fog of war removal is that an advantage or just you know is that an unfair advantage um, now Wargaming have started to introduce a number of mods into the game and that's welcome and I personally think that's the way it's got to go um, you, but they also introduced the, this mod hub where you could go and download supposedly approved um, mods the only problem with that is 
it doesn't appear that anyone's regulating that because I've heard several stories of people who, in good faith, went along to the Mod Hub. It's on the World of Tanks uh, website. Um, you know, it says download mods here, these, and it ranks the modders by how popular they are and what they do and blah, blah, blah. <coughs> and people have downloaded things in good faith and then been banned. And it appears that even, you know, I know that I, I use the solo mod pack. And within the solo mod pack, there's a whole raft of options that you can select. Now, some of them are not legal. But I can download that whole mod pack from World of Tanks site. Um, and that just seems completely disingenuous. Now, I know that some of them, and some of them he actually does say legal and not legal. Um, now, why he's put something on you know, mod pack which is illegal, we can argue that all you like. But that's the reality so people go in good faith download this mod pack click the button you know oh well, that's an interesting model i have that one i'll have that one i have that one i have that one i have that one and within that they select something that's not actually legal um and there's a couple of cases of people getting a week-long ban for for doing that and that seems to me completely wrong now wargaming need to clean clean up the whole modding situation they need to clean up the input or the use of um, uh, illegal mods for sure and and I think they are trying to however they need to get this as a as, as a politician would say in a joined up way um, they need to think this through properly so if you're going to have a hub on your website of approved mods you need to make sure that they are bloody approved there's no good allowing somebody to put stuff up there that is illegal because effectively you're saying these are fine because they're on our website I don't, I'm no lawyer, but that would be my argument there. So they need to do something about it. Now, they are saying that they are now trying to formally recruit some of the leading modders onto the team so that these mods that they produce will be um, effectively implemented into the game. And again, I think in terms of level playing field, that's a good thing. Now, I have mods I like to use. I like the one that has um, gives me the XVM rating of various players on the teams because i like to know you know if i'm gonna if i'm heading into a city and all around me are players who are not particularly statistically good players i'm going to play slightly different to if i've got a couple of really good players with me likewise if there's a U super uniscum with me i'll know that probably he's going to cut and run as soon as it's um looking a bit dodgy because he's worried largely worried about his stats gross generalization i know but it helps there's a couple of other things like uh, the zoom on the gun i like to have um, a particular pack of zooms. i like a particular um uh, you know um, aim point thing i like to have uh, damage indicators to tell me you know which shell which guns have, have hit me what damage has been caused which i've ricocheted that kind of stuff i like things like my my um, stats for my session I've been playing so I can see you know have I had a good day have I had a bad day because some days you think I'm having a really shit day and you look at it and you think actually I haven't it's just you remembered a couple of really shit games and it does help the converse is true of course as well so there's various mods I like to have within my now if they were taken out of the game would it stop my enjoyment of the game no it would take me a few days to readjust for it but at least I'd feel you know a little bit happier you know I'd be fine with that I would love that everybody had the say access to the same mods and new players would have it installed in the game to have exactly the same uh, advantage in inverted commas as I do or any other player do does and you know installing these into the game it's like um, battle assistant was the artillery mod that everyone started to use and that was implemented into the game so now when you hit the G button on the keyboard um, you get that sort of direct fire view from the artillery. Um, that used to be a mod. Uh, it's now implemented within the game. And there's a number of others that have been implemented. So the fact they're recruiting modders, thumbs up. The fact they're doing a crap job in policing their own mod hub, big thumbs down. Um, and they need to get a grip with that. Enough of my soapbox. But let me know what you think about mods down below, please. I know it's a contentious thing. People, a lot of players, you know, say we should play vanilla. We should play exactly as the game gives us. Um, and, and I have some sympathy with that. Um, and as I say, I wouldn't mind if they said 
that was the way it's going to happen. But while I can implement mods, I'm going to use them because I find them useful. And I know it's of familiarity as well, frankly. I've always used mods, well, for the last couple of years anyway. And it's familiarity. Um, at times I've worried that some of them are illegal. Um, and if that's the case, I take them off. Um, but, um, you know, I would never intentionally use an illegal mod. But as I say, there needs to be a cleaning up of these intentional and, and unintentional mods. Anyway, enough of that soapbox, as I say. Um, obviously, somebody was asking about whether or not matchmaking would go to plus or minus one like it is in Blitz, and there is no plan to implement that. Plus two is here to stay, frankly. Um, and, you know, that is the way it is, so you just have to get used to it. Um, we cannot eliminate team kill system. So... I I don't know really what this is... Uh, this is about again there are mods that you can select solo has one where you collect click a button and it will prevent you firing on your own teammates um it, it, you know so intentionally or unintentionally now i have turned mine off not because i want to team kill but because um, i found on occasions when there's a snarling you know melee of en of enemy and friendly tanks going around each other um I try and fire on the enemy tank and because my friendly tank is somewhere close by the system goes uh -uh, and won't let me fire and I found that incredibly frustrating um, so I removed that uh, from my mod pack but um, you know team kill is an issue and they need to, they do need to get across I was playing the other day uh, on my in arty and literally the game started a grill turned around and just shot me from my own team um, I don't know what his issue was. Um, he was just a knobhead, but he didn't get banned for it. <laughs> it didn't even go blue, and yet he one-shotted me. <sighs> it's it's a it's a multiplayer game, and you get all kinds of knob jockeys out there. A uh, Japanese tree edition of a tank destroyer line is under consideration, and there's but there's no plans to implement it into the game yet. But it may be implemented next year. Now this has been talked about off and on for a while. Um, but um, yeah, it looks like this may actually come bear fruit but as they said in the next one this year will be Italy and Poland those will be the two new tech trees so we won't get um, new tank destroyer line until you know, 2019 maybe um, which is sad for those of us who love TDs um, regarding the end game content content other than the clan wars is also being devised uh, being tested um, and examining unusual new game modes um, and we'll plan to make that relatively low tier so relative low tier tanks can participate so I guess this is a good thing um, they've they've continually tried to reinvent various modes and options and frankly really haven't worked um, uh, even things like the grand battles seem to have dropped out favor um, but, you know, they'll keep doing it, and that's good. Um, I'd like to see a PvE. Uh, is it PvE? The one against bots. I'd love to see that game mode into the game, and using historic models, for instance. I would love that. Um, that would get me excited, but I know it wouldn't get everyone excited. So uh, We'll be announcing new Clan Wars content on March 26th, maybe. Well, that's already gone, so I don't know whether that's happened, as I don't play Clan Wars, so I don't know. Uh, and also, there may be new vehicles. Okay, so presumably the wind vehicles. As for the balance of income and expense expenditure, so I guess people are moaning the fact that um, uh, when you're spamming lots of gold, you don't make any money. Well, get over it. Um, I don't know. I, I'm I'm guessing here, but um, they're saying you know it's not an easy task, and it isn't, right? You know, the whole point about World of Tanks, the premise that the the tiering worked on, was that you could, if you had a reasonably good game and you didn't spend lots of uh, credits on um, premium ammunition and you did a reasonable amount of damage and got a reasonable amount of experience you would um, make a bit of money a bit of extra credits and extra xp on tiers one to ten uh, one to nine or one to eight really but at tiers nine and ten most often you lost money I unless you had some amazingly good game and didn't use any gold um, you know you generally lose money at tiers nine and ten uh, and that's the way the game runs, um, right or wrong. 
it's a bit of a shock to the system when you do finally get up to tier 10 after you've been grinding down tech trees and you think well i've made it now i can play lots of good games and then suddenly realize you're losing twenty thousand every game so you have to then go back to tier 8 to grind out more credits to be able to pay for your tier 10s um and, and it's largely because of the the shell costs are so high and also the repair costs are so high so you definitely do better in a tier 10 if you don't die for instance um but um they're not going to change that particularly and because it is a huge huge task and and frankly i don't see it's a particular issue um you know personally you know you lose tank you lose money on some games you win some on on other games as long as you end up more in credit than you do in debit then that's fine but i know for players who love playing their tier 10s constantly um <clears throat> it can be a bit of an issue but uh that's why wargaming dangle that to carrot of a tier 8 premium tank so you can earn extra credits to pay for your your addiction at tier 10 cunning huh uh developing new functions for the next esports and during the year we may add new functions for esports into the game so i did i don't think i talked about this but there was a suggestion that esport uh, the world of tanks esports thing was basically going to be curtailed this year because it hasn't been terribly successful um but they're clearly continuing to work on it it's a good way of getting um the name of world of tanks out there to a, la a wider gaming community um <clears throat> and um i guess my issue with uh, esports world of tanks was always that it just didn't seem to really bear in reality to the to the real to the game i played you know it was the same maps and often the same vehicles but it just the play style was so different um and the games were so different, I just barely recognised it, apart from, you know, the landscape and everything else. So, hey-ho. Uh, will weather be implemented, rain or fog, like the PS4 has? Um, and they said they're considering that. That's it. <laughs> um, and again, I've heard this before. It's same with smoke. They've talked about that. I, I wouldn't be surprised if some of these things come into the game as we move forward. But, you know, if you thought you were pissed off with getting Himmelsdorf every time you went out in artillery, imagine if you had the variability of you, when that started a game and there was fog and you went out to scout in your light tank and you couldn't see more than, you know, 150 metres. That's going to be pretty pissy, isn't it? Uh, events to acquire bonds will be held again. So another opportunity to earn that. We talked about the fact last week there's not going to... They they're saying that they will mean, you will not be able to buy bonds they will only ever be won or earned um so it looks like more missions coming to acquire bonds so fine you know each their own i i have to hold my hand up and say i don't think they're quite as much of a problem in the game as i thought they were going to be i feared that um that by introducing those bonds and allowing uh, good players who were largely going to have the bonds to buy extra special equipment that made their tanks even better would unbalance the game um, maybe I underestimate how many of these players do actually have this equipment out there, but I don't notice it particularly. And I play a lot of games, and I play quite a lot of higher tier games, and I've only, I haven't even got enough equipment. I haven't got enough bonds to, to to buy any equipment yet. I could buy those extra consumables with them, but I don't see the point. Um, so, not sure it's been necessarily a big issue. Um, but you know the more bonds that are out there the more likelihood that people will buy the special equipment and therefore get a big advantage versus their competitors um, is there a possibility of nerfing premium vehicles yes but there's no plans to do it so and it's unlikely um, again we talked about this many many occasions it's one of these things that comes up all the time in world of tanks is you know when you're going to nerf x premium insert name uh when you're going to buff x premium uh insert name um you know the, the they do not like to uh nerf premium tanks they have done it in the past a couple of uh ex, you know really far back um the uh, type 59 for instance was a tank that was nerfed several times i believe um, I didn't have it at the time, so I don't really know. But uh, from what I, what I understand and read, it was nerfed a couple of times at least. Um, interesting, then. It's been buffed recently. So um, they don't like fiddling with premiums, even when they are unbalanced. Um, and that's because of legal implications. They do not like the risk of being sued, uh, because ultimately, with premium vehicles, we buy them with money. And that becomes a contract 
in some way so there's an issue that if you if you buy um, let's take a defender for instance you buy a defender with the stats it's got and the way it plays that's what you're buying if then six months down the line wargaming go now yeah, we're going to tone that we're going to reduce its armor we're going to reduce its gun it's no longer what you bought and because you bought it rather than you earned it um, there are legal implications in many countries and Wargaming are scared shitless of that. So they don't nerf tanks unless they absolutely have no alternative. They just tend to withdraw them from the shop and hope that eventually the players that used to play them either stop playing them or they are so rare that they're not an issue in the game um, or players drop out the game and therefore their accounts become inactive and those tanks are never seen again. So that can, tends to be the way they do it. Um, but... Um, yeah, n no possibility really of nerfing of premium vehicles. Uh, so I don't know whether anyone else spotted this, but this was an interview with uh, Victor Crisley, the CEO of um, Wargaming, developer obviously of World of Tanks, um, which was published here on the Armoured Patrol. <clears throat> Excuse me. So very interesting, um, well, I say very interesting, sort of interesting bit here, but it shows the focus of the t of the team and what they're trying to do. I mean, he talks excessively about uh, 1.0 and how magnificent it is and how, <clears throat> you know, basically in the last, uh, we said the last two, two and a half years, we've had somewhere around 70 updates to the game. <clears throat> but they're mainly sort of bug fixes and small content increases. But this is like a completely new game, 1.0. Um, you know, 500 different tanks, new maps, different nations, blah, 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 new map, yeah, all that kind of stuff. And rather excessively, he describes it's like a level of detail, almost like in Avatar. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Uh, keep taking the pills Victor no I think in all seriously 1.0 has been really really good um, <clears throat> I know there's some teething problems but you know he may be exaggerating it but actually it is a pretty much an incomplete overhaul of the game and you know you're going to have a few bugs I, uh, tonight playing some games with shoot I managed to m lodge my um, Swedish TD in a rock that really I shouldn't have been able to log <laughs> lock myself into but I did um, and that's kind of part of the sort of things that are going on in the game but hey it will get better the mini patches that keep bringing in will refine it and so forth so <clears throat> so other thing he said the core game experience hasn't changed according to Crisley it's just about getting it better and that's the message to the players at the end of the day it's all about them we're a private company we don't have share price or quarterly reports <clears throat> if you've stopped playing World of Tanks one, two years ago, you've missed like 10 or 15 updates. And this one is the King of King updates. So, you know, I think that's very much what they've done with this 1.0. It was long overdue to refine and update the game to make it look pretty. You know, in a world where people buy with their eyes, um, you know, it, it's it's important that the product looks good. And I think it does look good now. And clearly they're about trying to attract back a lot of the players that used to play the game. And of course new players. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm a bit croaky this evening. Um, the question here is about will players uh, have to worry about the game becoming obsolete um, on their older machines. And Victor makes the point that we all make from time to time around this update. I think a lot of people worried you know will i need to update my pc blah de, blah de, blah but actually you know he's saying here the core of their business is in russia eastern europe and china where the there tend to be much older pcs so if they can't run a game on those pcs they are killing their own business so if most of their most of their clientele most of their their punters are in those countries where they don't have decent pcs then they're not going to screw them by running a game that just doesn't run on them. So they're always thinking about how um, how it will run on a lower spec PC. And I, and I applaud them for that. I think they do a lot of things wrong, but I do think they do a lot of that sort of thing really well because, you know, why should you have to keep upgrading your PC just to play the game you love? It's just stupid. Um, next one is about uh, eSport. Um, again, I've talked about this. I'm not overly big on esports; not my thing at all. 
um, but um, you know I know some people do like watching it so it's interesting he's talking about basically it needs to appeal to the middle-aged gentlemen <laughs> which are the main player base frankly of World of Tanks and you know that'll make a lot of you snigger um, and some of you look around saying well he doesn't mean me but he does mean you <laughs> he means me that's for sure um, I'm a middle-aged gentleman I'm not sure about gentleman actually middle-aged chap should we say that but um, so it needs to appeal to them. So having these teams of 7v7s and guys who are whizzing around, you know, doing it extraordinarily well in the tanks, and we just don't recognise the game. Um, so they're now looking at, you know, 15v15s, they're looking at other ways to make it much more realistic. Um, and they said, let's not forget, World of Tanks is about guys after work being home and blowing stuff up. <laughs> That's the bulk of our players, and there's nothing to be ashamed of. And he's absolutely right. I don't know about you guys, that's why I do it. I love it. It's because I finish work. I'm lucky I work from home most of the time, but I finish work. I finish my home commitments, my family, everything else. My wife goes to bed, my kids are in bed. Well, if they're not out partying, that is. Um, and I switch on the PC, and I have a few hours of my time blowing shit up with people I have a laugh with and that's why I play World of Tanks. Simple as that. And it's you know, and they I think at times World of Tanks has lost sight of its player base. I'm always heartened to hear Victor because he does seem to actually understand what the game is all about and why people play it. So the question question about uh, have you ever thought of introducing a battle royale to World of Tanks? So that's the sort of last man standing scenario, you know. Um <clears throat> And Victor seems to be thinking on the fly here, saying, yeah, it sounds like a good idea. It'd be really good in World of Tanks, but we're not going to do it just yet. So it's a good idea, but not coming anytime soon. Um, and his next question, I think, is to the heart of some of the problems around World of Tanks at the moment. It's attracting new players. And he said, what, uh, what are the things that you're doing to bring in players who've never played the game before? Um, and he's talking about, you know, the fact they've, in eight years, they've introduced World of Warships, World of Warplanes, World of Blitz, uh, World of Tanks Blitz, uh, World of Warships Blitz, the console mobile version. So they've done all sorts of things to try and attract new players. But he's making the point that, you know, their traditional player base, the Russian Eastern European players, are much more forgiving of the game. They'll learn, they'll be prepared to get blown up and learn from their mistakes. Western players are not like that. They want immediate gratification. I know I do. Don't you, boys? <coughs> Sorry, and girls. I'm not going to be sexist here. Girls can have gratification too. Um, and they don't like being killed immediately. So they're saying, he's saying in this that um, that's why for the West, we're very, very serious on the crusade to make a better onboarding experience, um, to maybe use some sort of PVE elements. So... They're working on a load of things to try and help players through that learning curve. Because let's be honest, it does take a lot to learn how to play this game. Um, it's not easy. Um, some people pick it up much quicker than others. But basically you have to learn a lot of things to be good at it. And that's the same in every game, right? You have to learn how to play it. You can't just um, install it on computer and just play. <coughs> well, if you do it kind of loses its interest really quickly but i think world of tanks it takes a lot of getting to know so yeah good to see that they're going to put more and more effort on attracting new players and you know i without harping on it i i personally think they need to do a lot better job there because at the end of the day they are the players that we will be playing in two or three years time if we're still playing the game um, and, you know, we certainly won't be playing the t game if there's nobody on it. If there's nobody playing or you keep saying the same players over and over again or, you know, you have to wait for 10 minutes to log into a game because there just aren't enough players, it's no fun. So we need new blood into the game. We need new players coming in, new, new people to pick it up and try it. So um, last question was about where do you go from here and how do you see World of Tanks developing? So... Eight years ago when we started, Victor says, nobody would have thought we'd been this successful or run so long. Um, I myself was given, uh, I, I myself would have given it three, four, maximum five years. Eight years later, since the uh, um, 
you know, basically eight years longer, younger it is, uh, longer it's going on like crazy. So, you know, he's talking about comparing it with TV shows that don't even run that long, and, and he's quite right. I mean, they should be applauded for continually reinventing the game. So, you know, good job. Um, and, you know, he's trying to make the point that the game is developed for players and, you know, it's not, it's, it's a private company, they want to make money, clearly, but it's um, it's about the players and he makes the point that a number of their top developers, their top personnel are ex-players, they are players um, and they do things for the good of the players. So, um, you know, I think he says here, we work for our players and we sometimes, and sometimes our players work for us. And, you know, I think that's a good thing. And frankly, any kind of game can't exist if it doesn't forget about its player base and how they perform and what they want. But it's good to hear Victor, you know, recount that um, and reinforce that opinion. So anyway, nothing particularly, you know, insightful, but um, nice to hear what he has in mind. And, you know, clearly he hasn't lost sight of keeping new bring new players into the game he hasn't lost sight of keeping the requirements of the game to be you know manageable on the fairly basic computers and um he's going to continue to invest in the game so thumbs up from here but you know let me know what you think the amx 40 super pershing is7 and mouse what do they have in common good armor for their tier their enemies are used to hearing we didn't penetrate their armor of course, this is only true if you use these tanks properly, which is a permanent problem for many players. Here you can see the E-100 trying to block shells with the front of her turret. And here's the IS-7 in a side-scraping position. In five minutes, you'll know what they are doing wrong. We'll tell you how to use your armor wisely and help you carry out personal missions. So... <laughs> let that run because it's got an interesting intro so i i like this um so world of tanks um i think this is an eu one but i'm sure they're doing it for all the different uh, regions um are starting to do some more explanation type videos um to help players understand the mechanics of the game so this one's obviously on how to block damage with your tank um takes you through sort of the idea of side scraping side armor where the weak spots are that kind of stuff um which which is really really good i think um there's also another one which i've seen which looks at uh, explain, explaining penetration values and how the mechanics work along that now frankly i found that one bamboozling in extreme and i thought i understood it but it was really confusing so maybe there's a bit of work needs to be done on that one but you know i think generally i've talked about this on many occasions on these videos is that um the they need to do something to encourage newer players to play the game and uh, for for some players coming into the game it, they just don't have the understanding of how tank warfare worked its mechanics how the game mechanics work the variabilities the rng all this kind of stuff that factors into how you play the tanks i mean i did a series of videos which seems to have gone down pretty well looking at how different classes of tanks um uh, should be played or tradition not saying inverted should be played i'm not dictating that's how they should be played but in terms of how their role was in reality if you play like that in the in the game you got a far better chance than otherwise and that and that was born out of my own frustration of being in games where some poor soak in a in a light tank goes and tries to trade shots with a heavy and gets killed within a few seconds and and i, I can only imagine the frustration of that player in the light tank um with, oh this is a stupid game i can't you know how do i compete and it, it, i realized talking to a few players um that you know kind of for people like me who are a bit of history nut and have followed you know interest in tank warfare and uh, tank development and this stuff so i understand you know how armored warfare happens and what what happened during the wars and the different roles of different vehicles and why designs were as they were um but I realise I'm an oddity like that, and I know a few of you are, but there's also, I know there are some who don't. Um, and if you've come from just a gaming background with no real historical interest, chances are you don't really give a stuff. But actually knowing the role of the tank 
and how the mechanics work with the different types of you know armor and uh, apcr versus heat and how ap works versus he uh, is important to improve your game style to and therefore improve your enjoyment of the game because frankly it's no fun to keep getting rolled out, rolling out your tank and just getting obliterated in the first few minutes of a game and just thinking, well, what's the point of this? I'll go and do something else. Um, and as as players, we, uh, the community of older players who've been around the game longer, who've been playing it for a lot longer, have an obligation to try and encourage newer players along. It's one of the things I used to love about Havoc. Um, sadly, it doesn't seem to have happened so much as a clan thing anymore, but uh, hopefully we'll start again. They used to run a whole load of training sessions, which anybody could join. Um, you know, it didn't have to be clan members, but people could join and find out, you know, how best to use a light tank, how best to use a medium tank, you know, what's a, how, you know, the different mechanics of the game. And if we as, as, as experienced players, not necessarily good players, but players who understand how the game works, can do something to encourage newer players um, into the game so that they improve their play style, they're more likely to hang around and the game is likely to live longer and we're likely to have more opponents to deal with and fight with and have fun with and colleagues and, and um, clan mates maybe. So, you know, I think everything we can do and I, and I, you know, put the onus on us as players. I know sometimes I've not been the best at it, but you know, I've always tried uh, when I can to try and encourage players and, you know, give them some advice if they're willing to accept it. Now, we all know there are some pig stubborn people who just don't give, want to hear anything. Um, and, and that's fine if that's their choice. Uh, they're probably not the people we want hanging around the game anyway. But there are likewise a number of players who just really just need some tips. You know, how about next time before you pull out around that corner, you side scrape around it or you... You know, you try and bait the enemy to fire. You, you don't just stop, aim, blah, you know, all that kind of stuff. Or, you know, you're driving that uh, uh, Strutwagen S1 um, and you're you're trying to get too close to the enemy. You're a sniper, sit back, use your gun from range. That kind of advice that just hopefully helps people to move forward. And, you know, kind of if I can do anything on this channel to help, and, and it's an open invite, anybody... Any newer players, if there's stuff you don't understand or you think, oh, I'd love to have a video explaining X, Y, or Z, if it's within my power, I'll try and do one. Just just let me know in the comments down below. And and, and I say to all you old soaks out there, me included, take some time just to helping some of these younger, uh, not younger as in age, but newer players into the game um, to encourage them to learn from their mistakes, to learn how to play better so that they will be around for longer so good on wargaming i think to bring out these videos i think this blocking one is a lot simpler to understand than the uh, than penetration one but even quite enough of that noise i think that's quite enough of that noise okay so i'm freely admit i'm far too old i don't understand this stuff but anyway just in case you're into girls and panzers uh which i'm i read here is a, an anime thing i i've heard of it i'm not that that ignorant or behind the scenes but i just don't don't get it anyway um there's apparently some link up happening with um wargaming and girls and panzers uh sometime this year so uh which is being released on the 5th of april in russia so there'll be a uh, a special uh mod that you can put on presumably to make your tanks look like said vehicles in the game um yeah i, I have nothing more to say I like the music though god i'm old so April is virtually here and it's time for a quick look at some of the offers and missions that we're going to expect on the EU server for the month. So top of the tree, as I suspected it would be, it's the uh, Russian 
um, light tank, tier 10 light tank, the T100 light tank LT. Um, so as usual, there'll be discounts on acquiring vehicles along that tech tree up until the tier 10. Um, and also a number of missions associated with playing the tier 10, but also bonuses for your crew um, of any any of the tanks on that tech tree. So if you're looking to, to work your way through to probably one of the best, I think probably people would say the best light tier 10 light tank uh, in the game, um, then um, now's probably a good time to work your way through. Put all that energy that you've got your Easter eggs uh, to, to to grinding your way down that line. I still can't work my way past the T fifty uh, T fifty four lightweight. Everyone says how great a tank it is, but can I buy a win it? No, I can't. Anyway, uh, so first week of April seventh and oh, first weekend of April seventh and ninth um, is uh, a special load of extra missions and. Um, opportunity to boost up your experience that's that's going to be the focus there so presumably there'll be times three experiences that sort of thing uh, the 12th to the 15th actually marks World of Tanks seventh birthday so the seventh anniversary so there will be a number of special offers anniversary missions etc etc so if I was a betting man I would say there was probably going to be some discounts on the higher tier tanks which i'm hoping is true because i've unlocked another tier 10 and i'm just waiting to buy it so uh, no guarantees but uh, i would imagine there'll be discounts on the tech tree uh, purchases plus of course there'll be more ways for you to spend money with world tanks because they're generous like that um so 21st to the 24th um, is crew boosting experience so extra missions associated with crew boast uh, bonuses and presumably times twos or times the threes for for your crew experience if you win and you come in the top 10 that's usually how it works uh 26th and 30th of april is tiger day god does that come round again so quickly jeez been doing this for far too long um so i bet you can probably buy the tiger 131 then i should imagine but there'll be also a number of missions associated with tiger day and then the 28th of april to the 1st of may uh is xp fever night beaver no no I won't dance um so yeah probably extra opportunities to earn extra xp on your crew um so kind of a yeah an okay month this month no hint of when the italians are coming um but um yeah i expect we'll see them at some point during the month or at least we'll probably see the premium tank at some point during the month um but we'll see anyway that's the eu april sneaky peek so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. I won't be around next week. I'm away for a week's holiday uh, down in glorious Cornwall in the rain. Um, and um, so no, no rambles next week. I try and upload a few videos if I get a chance so that you get a bit of watching while I'm out. But uh, apologies, it probably won't be every single day. Um, but uh, hopefully there's enough there to keep you entertained. Anyway, um, I hope you have a good week and I will catch up with you when I'm back. So see you soon. Enjoy your games. Have fun. Try not to take it too seriously. See you again soon. Gamerdom out.